Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Wednesday, February 13th, 2019. This is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. This also is not specific to anything like love or career or sign. This is just what spirit wants to bring through to discuss with us today, yeah? So, um, I'm feeling better than yesterday, although not totally. <laughs> um, you know, as if some of you saw on Instagram last night, I went live and I just talked about it and I made some dinner and I took a bath and it was really great. And by the time I went to bed, I felt way better and everything was fine. And then I woke up this morning, I got up and as I was meditating, <laughs> A lot of the symptoms came back. Um, I feel activity in my third eye chakra. Um, my nose ever since has started to run and it's like, oh, so just, I am going to be sniffling. I'm probably going to have to blow my nose during the reading. I apologize if that offends you. There is nothing I can do about it right now. <laughs> It's definitely, I mean, it feels like, it feels like a head cold, maybe even a sinus infection. Um, but like I said, this morning I felt fine when I woke up. And then as I was, actually, as I was meditating this morning, um, it, li it literally felt like something blew open in my third eye chakra again. So, and then now all of the symptoms are back. And it almost, it almost, it feels like a cross between a sinus infection or a head cold or allergies and something like that. Um, and if you follow Aluna Ash, uh, she did mention that, you know, some, you might be feeling some of, some, some symptoms like that, including headaches. We do have some plasma waves coming through. I don't know exactly when, but I know personally when we do have a wave coming through, uh, I tend to feel it, um, ahead of when it happens. I tend to feel and experience things ahead of time, sometimes long in advance. Um, so I really do feel like that's what's going on here. Again, I am taking it easy, so I'm not really taking any private readings this week other than um, doing, you know, morning coffee. And actually, also, I'm doing an event tomorrow uh, at here in the city. It is a Valentine's Day event. All of the information is on my Instagram page and actually on my Facebook page. I believe I shared it there too. If not, I'll do that, but I'll double check. But um, come hang out. It's your, uh, we're going to be getting some, doing some uh, love readings and there will be jewelry on sale. If you want to go on all the, inf get all the information, go on my Instagram page at divine underscore conversations. But other than that, oh, and I will be, <laughs> I will be at Om Shanti on Friday. So I'm keeping up with my regular schedule and things that have been pre, pre-booked in advance and all that. But as far as doing private readings, personal readings this week, I'm not going to be doing that because I need time to recover. Like this, this is really like a big ascension thing right now. <laughs> okay. So if you're feeling anything like that, most likely why okay we're going through a big shift Whew. so take care of yourselves guys it is very much a self-care kind of weekend or week not just weekend because I bet it's hump day now happy hump day Woo. but yeah it's a self-care kind of week okay so without further ado general reading for Wednesday February 13th now keep in mind just because this is coming through or this is dated for the 13th of February, it doesn't mean it has to resonate on the 13th of February. It could resonate, it, it could be something that resonated or happened for you before the 13th. It could be something that comes about later on down the road. And because it is a general reading, it may not resonate with you all, with you at all, okay? So take what resonates, leave what doesn't. And yeah, it's always advised to get a personal reading if you would like um, a deeper understanding of what's going on for you individually, okay? So here we go. Hi Spirit, please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Wednesday, February 13th, 2019.
Thank you so much, Spirit. All righty. Here we go, guys. Wednesday, February 13th. Two more shuffles here, and then we'll see what we've got for the day. As I was praying, I did hear Heart Chakra Awakening, and for many of us, that is helping clear out our higher centers, which is most likely what's happening for me right now. Okay. Ooh, whoa. Okay. I'm going to try that one more time. Yes, Heart Chakra Awakening and Heart Chakra Clearing is what's happening right now. And that's actually been going on for a little bit, you know. Um, and for some of us, it's really starting to reach the higher centers. It's clearing up more space for integration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's see what we have for today, February, February 13th. Wednesday, February 13th. Best messages, please, Spirit. Okay, that's enough. Underneath the deck, we have the Two of Wands. Now, the Two of Wands, oh, please excuse the manicure. <laughs> the Two of Wands has been coming out for a while. Um, there are a lot of us, especially those that are, you know, our fire signs, or maybe you have um, your north, north node. Mm, excuse me. Maybe your north, north node is in fire. Your north node is, um, that's the north node of the moon, is what is your karma. Um, and, you know, and that kind of thing. Um, I don't know too much about it, but I've been doing, I've been looking into it a little bit, and that's what I understand it to be at the moment. Um, but the Two of Wands has been coming out lately because, you know, we're at a crossroads right now. Um, so you really, this, like me personally, this is why I am dealing with, you know, this cleansing, this healing, because I am, I'm shifting my life. I, I'm going, I'm, I'm looking to go into a very different direction. I don't know exactly what direction that is, but it's happening. Um, and that's what's happening for a lot of other people right now. So we have this crossroads, the two of wands here, okay? We also have, yep, the tower, the four of swords, death, yeah, you see? Yep. The empress and the eight of cups. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. But what we have here, we're definitely at a crossroads with this two of wands. Now, the thing that I'm getting with the two of wands is the two of wands often is about having to make a decision. Yes, but that decision does not need to be made right now. All right, it really doesn't because there is still a lot of flux, okay? There's still a lot that's changing. We have the tower here. Now, this either could be something from the past, okay? Some sort of residual tower moment that you're still uh, a residual tower moment energy that you're still dealing with or this could be something that has ha recently happened for you okay what is a tower moment for those who don't quite understand a tower moment is when something in your life suddenly changes either you get some sort of illumination you find out something or something is ripped away from you or um, you take some sort of radical action that makes a drastic change, and it's often very sudden. Now, <clears throat> the universe can dish out a tower moment for you, but this happens when you have been guided towards making some sort of move, making some sort of decision, going in a certain path, this, that, and third, and you refuse to do so, in, a, in which case, the universe comes in and does it for you so that often you have no other choice but to go in this new direction. Other times, you choose to take the advice or the guidance and you go in this direction. And yes, it still is a tower moment, um, whether you did it or whether you 
initiated it or whether the universe initiated it, but usually when you initiate it, it's a little less traumatic, okay? For the most part here, this tower energy is fairly recent, but still in the past, okay? Next, you have the Four of Swords. Actually, the Four of Swords with death. So, for the most part, the Tower moment is past energy, although it may be still recent past. And now you're going through a transformation because of it. And so we're needing to rest, period. <laughs> okay, point blank, period. The Four of Swords is about resting, absolutely about resting recovering, recuperating, doing some healing, meditation, taking some time away to maybe collect your thoughts, understand on a deeper level what may have transpired. Sitting with the energy of this in this crossroads and understanding where it is you've come from so that you know have a better idea of where you want to go in the future so that you can make that decision once the time is right okay we have the empress with the eight of cups now the empress talks about the divine feminine energy yes but the, the empress also talks about abundance okay and many of us are walking away from what we thought we had to do in the past or who we thought we had to be in the past we're walking away from this because we fully understand that the universe is incredibly abundant but then we ourselves are the abundance of the universe and there are infinite directions that we can go in, okay? So this does feel very exciting here with this Empress energy and the Eight of Cups. Um, just because, I mean, yes, you are walking into the unknown. However, it's not fear-based. It's exciting, or at least it has. It, it should be exciting. It could be exciting. Some of you might be a little afraid because, yes, you are walking into the unknown and you're not too used to dealing with unknown energies like that, but it's still kind of exhilarating to know that you're starting a brand new chapter here for yourself. I am, I am so sorry about all the sniffling. I know it's gross and rude, but... It is what it is, y'all. <laughs> okay. Perspectives are changing drastically. And many of you might be dealing, because that's like, personally, that's what I'm dealing with right now. Um, I'm dealing with the cleansing of my perception. A lot of the work that I've been doing since, since, December, since like the 1st of December, okay? Because there was a, there for me, there was personally, there was a major tower moment back on November 30th. And that made a huge change in my life. Now, I had already planned on making a change. It just, the tower moment was that when the universe came in and, well, the universe kind of set things up for me to just kind of like, let it all go and because of that um let, and this these are things that i had been holding up holding in for a long time that were quite pent up and it just i just i eventually at one point it was all just perfect it just came all came out and that kind of <clears throat> pushed me in this new direction earlier than i expected okay which is not a bad thing at all um but ever since then i've been dealing with a change in perspective and that change in perspective has been the idea that you have to constantly be grinding you have to constantly be working extremely hard just to not only not just to get by but to get to where it is you want to go to achieve your goals to achieve your dreams this that and the third and I've been dealing with purging lack mentality that you know I grew up with as a kid not to say that I was uh, you know I, I, I mean it, um, that's hard to describe, but it, it was a lack of mentality that yes, I dealt with as a bit, a little bit as I was growing up, um, not much, but because I, I did grow up very comfortably physically with, 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 with material, emotionally, mentally, that was a whole different story, but 
um, I still had physical comforts. Like I grew up, up I grew up middle class, like kind of upper middle class. So, I mean, by no means was I un physically uncomfortable as I was growing up as a kid, but there was still a bit of a, a lack mentality that was passed down throughout generations. Okay, so it's ancestral, um, and 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 that kind of thing. And I've been really working on focusing on being the abundance of the universe even more so and so now at this point i've hit a level where i noticed it really a lot of it has really sunk in and so because of that there are things there are belief systems there are blockages that are all being purged out of my body right now that i've been holding on to and i'm also as this light worker energy person this and i very much am a transmuter um I do transmute a lot of shit. <laughs> um, because of that, now I'm, it's all just kind of coming out. So that's why I'm personally, I'm dealing with this third eye cleansing and this what feels like a, a sinus infection or a head cold or allergies all in one, you know. <sighs> so I, I, I say all that to say, I explain all that for you guys to then look at where you are in your lives. What, if, if you're feeling any, any of these ascension symptoms, what is that connected to? What have you been purging lately? What have you been dealing with? What have you been healing? Not only behalf, on behalf of yourself, but on behalf of your family, your ancestry and all that stuff. Because let me tell you, y'all, the cards don't lie. The Tower, Four of Swords, Death. I mean, there was a Tower moment. There was an extreme change. And now we're in a restful period because there's a huge transition happening. Okay. We're walking away from the past towards the greater abundance of the universe that we embody. Because why? We are the universe. Boop. <laughs> okay. So now... I would like to get some clarification and I'm going to be using the Epic Tarot today, which is available at Om Shanti Bookshop. Uh, check them out. They're a great place. I'm there every Friday from 11 to 5 and um, they have a fantastic selection. And if you want to check them out, go on their website, which can be found in the description box below. They do take orders online and ship or by the phone and ship. So check them out y'all they're fantastic and they have a ton of great readers and they do events and i'm very very happy to be part of the team there but this deck and many others that i have actually what i got the tarot apocalypsis and the tarot illuminati decks that i use for the twin flame mirror readings there you can get the crystal mandala the light worker the unicorn the whispers of love the animal spirit guides you can get there i have the unicorn tarot deck that you can get there they're fabulous y'all okay one more shuffle and then we're going to start with the top row here now for most of us this tower moment um is in the past but it was a big moment which is why we would still be de dealing with it residually but it's not even about not even the fact that we're dealing we're, we're dealing with the residual it was just a big tower moment that's leading to that catalyzed a lot of stuff so in essence, it really isn't even about the instance in when the tower was struck. It's more about the continued af aftermath and cleansing and clearing that's coming out of that. For many of you, this is pretty rough. It's pretty rough. But if it's that rough, it's because you have been resisting. You've been going against it. You've been fighting it for a while. And so now you're ha kind of having to catch up. But that's even more of a reason why you need to rest. Four of Swords. Self-care. Always. The self always comes first. And I'm not talking about in an egotistical way. I'm talking about if you're trying to be here for someone to help guide people. Like me, for example. I'm, I'm, I have a gift that allows me to help guide people. Okay? I could not do morning coffee yesterday. I literally woke up feeling like I got slammed in the face by a truck. And that was at 5.30 in the morning. I woke up at 5.30 today and I was like, okay, I can do this. 
of course, as I was meditating, all the symptoms started to come back because I was opening up this, this center, but I could not do it yesterday. And I felt bad about it, but I was like, there's no way, I mean, I'm not gonna be able to effectively give a good reading to help people out, so it's really not even worth it. So, if you find yourself in that position, please do not feel bad about taking some time to rest and heal, okay? So clarifying the Tower, Four of Swords, and Death here, please, Spirit. Just a little clarification here. Strength, excellent. Yeah, okay. All right, underneath the deck, you have the Three of Pentacles, and the Three of Pentacles is all about self-mastery in this moment in time, okay? You have strength with the, ooh, with the Five of Cups, the Page of Cups is in reverse, and you have the Eight of Pentacles. Okay. Now, yes, absolutely, there was some loss here. There's probably some fallout also. The Five of Cups, um, you know, the Five of Cups is an, in, is an energy where there's regret, there's remorse, there's shame, there's guilt, okay. There is also most likely some sort of social setting, social environment, social scene that was the cause or the catalyst or the, the space or the, the where this may have taken place. It may be where there may have been this fallout. Maybe there was a third party. <coughs> but you see, in typical decks, Obviously, it's different in this one, but in, in typical decks, oh, excuse me, the Five of Cups is uh, an energy where the Three of Cups, which represents that social scene, maybe a third party situation, those three cups have spilled. And you're left with the Two Cups, or the, the Two of Cups, which can symbolize a relationship, but what it, like a, a romantic relationship, maybe even a friendship that still stands amidst the loss that has been experienced, right? That Two of Cups, most likely in, these, in this situation, the Two of Cups that's represented, that's included in this Five of Cups here, right? Because three plus two equals five. The two that remains in this, in this situation here, that's your own union within your ability to find balance and between the masculine and feminine within, that ability to find union and companionship within yourself, okay? Now, because of this, there is much greater strength here, okay? So whatever you lost, whatever you experienced with this tower moment that is helping, that is helping catalyze this change and, and transformation for you is definitely making you stronger with the eight, with, with the eight, yes, but with strength. It's helping you understand yourself better, understand the world better, understand society better, understand energy better. It's helping you tame the beast within. Find more inner strength, inner control, restraint. Okay? It's almost as if all of this, <clears throat> well, not almost as if, for many of us, it's, all, it's as if it is that you are becoming a stronger light worker. You are becoming anchored in your strength, in your truth, in your ability to transmute energies or in your ability to spread light, in your ability to guide people, whatever, however that resonates for you. Now you have the Page of Cups in reverse with the Eight of Pentacles. The Page of Cups in reverse here is talking about a need for an apology. There could be some sort of an apology coming through there could be. I'm seeing a few things. The first one, the first thing I saw with this Page of Cups in Reverse and the Eight of Pentacles, you're not, for some of you, you're not even trying to wait around for some sort of apology. You're just working through whatever it is you need to work through. Okay? Now, for others, the other thing I'm seeing here is that there is some work being done, especially in the self-mastery sector. 
with the Three of Pentacles here. But between the Eight of Pentacles and the Page of Cups in reverse, there is some sort of work being done towards some sort of reconciliation. Someone may know that they owe someone else some sort of, like, at least uh, an, an acknowledgement, if it's not an official apology. Someone may not be able to really take responsibility for themselves. They may not be mature enough at the moment, and that could be what they're working towards. So even if that apology doesn't come towards you, you don't actually receive that apology. I do feel like there are some individuals associated with this situation here that are working on being a better version of themselves, that are working on <clears throat> developing some sort of emotional maturity. And regardless of whether you get the actual apology or not, I would still say this mission or the, the, the goal has been accomplished here in getting someone to see the deeper truths of themselves and to do something about it. Mission accomplished. That's really how we need to be looking at this right now. Because nothing is personal. However someone reacts towards you is a direct reflection of what they're going through. I had to think about that myself for a second. But when you when you think about it, yes. Regardless of whether you're perceived to be as right or wrong in the situation, whatever. It's really not as personal as you think. Now that doesn't mean that you should sit around and take shit from anybody. No. That absolutely should you never let anyone walk all over you and treat you like a doormat and treat you however they feel like treating you, especially if it's disrespectful. But... Again, it's still not as personal as you think or you might feel, okay? All right, so now let's clarify the Empress and the Eight of Cups. So we're walking away. We are, and this doesn't feel like, this just feels like we're moving forward. We've done a lot of work here to stack up our Eight Cups, right? And it may not be, I mean, obviously it's not the 10. So for some of you, you're moving on to find that last two that's still standing here in this Five of Cups that's clarifying things right now to complete your 10. Because often, and it's in this deck, it does show it as such. And you can't really see it because it's so small, but the cups are those little white, that little white line in the water right down there. Those are the eight cups. And in this deck, it's still stacked. In the clarifying deck that I'm using, I believe they're not um, standing. They've spilled, but in the in here, in this is the Moonchild Tarot. They're still standing, and in the traditional Rider Waite deck, all of those eight cups are still standing. So at any point, you could come back. So in theory, this could be someone just going off to find the last two cups to complete that ten, and that's kind of what this feels like here, because we've done a lot of emotional work upon ourselves, a lot of physical work on ourselves, a lot of healing has been done. We're starting to understand the abundance of the universe, which eights represent abundance, and so does the empress. And so now we're looking just to complete that emotional fulfillment for us. <clears throat> okay. So let's clarify. Let's clarify here. The empress with the eight of cups. The hierophant. Ooh. Looky here. Looky here. Looky, looky, looky here. Well... Well, well, underneath the deck, we have the Knight of Cups now, okay? So there is definitely a maturity aspect up in this bitch. There's definitely a, 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 um, some progress. Definitely some progress. And I really feel like the person that's walking away, that's moving forward, is actually the person that's moving forward in this situation and not necessarily just walking away spirit is saying it's better to say moving forward in this situation is embodying the energies of the knight of cups the knight of cups has been coming out a hell of a lot in the past few weeks between general readings and private readings the knight of cups is talking about this cosmic heart awakening that we're all going through this heart chakra cleansing and opening and clearing that i was channeling in the beginning of the reading 
living your life from a more vulnerable state, um, a little more emotional maturity than the Page of Cups, um, wearing your heart on your on your sleeve, being willing to be vulnerable, vulnerable, but knowing that vulnerability is a place of strength, not weakness. All right. Wow. Wowie, wow, wow. We have the tower again with that two of cups I was talking about. Mm -hmm. We also have the three of cups, the seven of pentacles, and the hierophant. For some of you, this could mean marriage. It also could mean uh, pregnancy because we are clarifying, you know, the Empress here with the Eight of Cups and all that. Um, commitment, though, was a big thing that I was channeling for this. But you see, the three, the three and the two does make do make a five here. Okay, and please excuse me. I'm just trying to take a second to to channel here. The three of cups with the seven of pentacles and the hierophant. The three of cups is a reconciliatory energy. Sure, it's a union energy. Sure, mind, body, and spirit union of mind body and spirit and if you remember when we were clarifying the top row here we had the three of pentacles underneath the deck which was in fact talking about self-mastery and so with the three of cups here that's another form of that it's the union of mind body and spirit it could be a friendly get together reconciliation but i'm seeing this union of mind body and spirit here which is helping you to harvest some really good stuff potentially it's helping or is helping you to get ready to plant some seeds for the future, which are also, and, and that all of that is all because your higher self is really integrating more into your system here with the Hierophant. You're learning a lot. There's definitely a lot of learning here, which is creating energies of reconciliation and even potential for commitment here, okay? Now, you, some of you could be walking into a tower moment. There could be some, uh, some soulmate that comes into your life here that you didn't even think would be someone that you could have a partnership with. Now, for others of you, you had, obviously, there was a friendship or a, most likely a relationship in which there, there was a tower moment and now you're walking away from it. But I'm seeing more as, I'm seeing this more as um, you had a tower moment which is leading you towards some sort of soulmate bond. Now you getting with a soulmate might create some sort of tower moments for other people around you too. It's a general reading, so take it as it resonates. Mm. All right. Let's do some oracle guidance here. We're going to start with the animal spirit. messages please spirit in relation to today's reading for Wednesday February 13th what have you got for us today for the collective all right it looks like we have two <laughs> we have zebra and we have spider okay those are two beautiful energies we're going to start with spider because it is first in the book here. <clears throat> here we go. 
Fighter, creator of prosperity through life's work, Dharma. The spider is an ingenious creator. The greatest gift is weaving the thread of Dharma into a vast, intricate web that supports the spider and those around it, both financially and spiritually. It is hard work, but the spider neither tires nor becomes impatient. This card reminds us creativity is everywhere. Be process-oriented rather than results-oriented, and soon your work becomes like the weaving of a magical, priceless tapestry. Abundance follows. When in balance, the spider is appreciative, enthusiastic, and prosperous. When out of balance, the spider is discouraged, tired, and forlorn. To bring into balance, one must ex uh, have a play, um, exhibit some playful creativity. And then finally, you have a zebra. <clears throat> Here we go. Zebra. Eccentric. Creative. A visionary. Zebras are the most precious of gems. They are young at heart, well-cultured, and have an undying curiosity about life. Being in the company of a zebra personality not only is a delight, but also opens our minds. Be prepared. Their potent magic is contagious, and, may, and you may soon find yourself in a faraway land, expanding your worldview while having a, a blast. Zebras also like to contribute to the global health through environmental or volunteer work. This card may be a hint to pack your bags. When in balance, zebra is worldly, enthusiastic, and fashion forward. When out of balance, zebra is jaded, pouty, and vain. To bring, in a, to bring into balance, one must go on an epic adventure or create some art. Okay, and so I want to close the reading now with some oracle guidance for the whispers of love here. And I want to get some guidance as to how we can best provide ourselves with some self-care at this time, yeah? Mm. Okay, here we go. Best messages, please, Spirit. How can we provide ourselves with some good self-care right now? Ooh, take a chance on love. That's enough. Underneath the deck, we have consider your foundation. You're being asked to look at how committed you are to love. And the first card that popped out was take a chance on love, which is so funny because that song, Take a Chance on Me from ABBA, been running through my head every <laughs> for the past few days. Take a chance on love. When we start to love, our lives are changed forever. And for some of you, I'm feeling like you're needing to just allow love into your life. And you don't have to do that by letting someone else external to you love you. No. Love yourself. It starts with you, right? And finally, you have love is all around you. See? There is love everywhere, all the time. Simply acknowledge this as truth. And don't fight it, says Spirit. If you want love in your life, you have to be more loving. And you doesn't, that doesn't mean that you have to just start loving on the people around you. You start by doing it for yourself. All right? So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful. I hope everyone has a great day. And I look forward to connecting with you again tomorrow for our next cup of coffee. Yeah. Take care. Bye.